Welcome to Sawdust and Cornbread. I'm really excited about today's video because we all need a place to put our bloomers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I transformed this livestock feeding trough into a lifetime sturdy window box. The first thing that you need to make a window box is a feeding trough. Now, if you don't have those laying around and you don't know a farmer that may have one to spare, you can get a feeding trough box at your local farm store. And the great news is there are one fourth of the price of the lifelong window boxes that I've been researching. So it's a great deal. Don't worry too much about the surface condition of these feeding troughs. So like if you get one from a farmer and it's all scuffed up and dirty or you've used one for something else, you can hose it off, not a problem. The feeding troughs that I got at my farm store were being used as display. They were there in front of the chicks and the ducks and they had literature in them, farm literature on how to take care of your ducks, how to take care of your chickens. Those were the only two left in the store and I needed them. So I asked if I could buy them, pointed out, yeah, they're kind of scuffed up, they've been in display, and I got an additional 10% off of the already good price. So it never hurts to ask and point these things out, but don't worry about the surface condition of your box as long as it's sturdy. The feeders I found are 9 inches tall, 13 inches from front to back, and 48 inches wide. Now, if your window is smaller or larger, I'm sure that you can find smaller or larger feeding troughs to meet your needs. You might have to do a Google search online, but I know they're out there. The next thing you need for your window boxes is a pressure treated piece of lumber that's okay to go outside that's two by four by eight and get them to cut that in half for you. Most hardware stores will cut it for you at no charge at all. I do it all the time. They're probably tired of seeing me, but get it cut in half. That way you can have one for each box and that's going to serve as the mounting piece for the box. The last thing you need for this project is a can of multi-surface spray paint. It'll say like for concrete, wood, plastic. I have used this paint on my vinyl shutters outside, my wooden front door, and they've endured all kinds of weather completely unscathed. So this has a big thumbs up for me, these multi-purpose paints, even on plastic. Now, if you are still a little uneasy about painting plastic, keep in mind that when your flowers grow out and the boxes fill up, you'll actually see very little of the box itself. So it's not a huge risk that you're taking whether or not you want to paint it. Use a fine grade sandpaper and scuff only the outside surfaces, the bottom and the top lip going in long horizontal strokes. Some of the all-purpose spray paints say on there that this step isn't necessary, but I don't trust them. I want to scuff that glossy surface up just to give the paint something to grip onto. Better safe than sorry. Before you paint your window boxes, you're going to want to drill some holes in the bottom for drainage. I used this 3 16th drill bit and I put 12 drainage holes in the bottom and I spaced them out evenly. If you don't do that, if you skip this step, then you may end up with plants that have wet feet and that can cause root rot. And you don't want root rot in lifetime window boxes. You have your drainage holes drilled. You have the outside surfaces lightly scuffed. Now it's time to paint it. So flip the whole thing upside down and you're gonna start by painting the bottom. Whenever you spray paint, you don't wanna start painting or spraying in the middle. You always want to start spraying off the side of whatever your project is. So you start spraying, go across, and don't stop until you're off again. And what that does is it prevents any kind of splatters or drips. It's the way that professional painters do it. And you want to do several thin layers rather than a few thick layers. Just lightly go across and then come back and overlap just a little bit and you keep doing that and you let it dry just a minute or two in between layers. Spray paint is really good about drying fast, especially this multi-purpose paint. Continue using this painting process till you finish coating the entire bottom, the sides, and the, the front side. You don't have to worry about painting the back side of the box or inside because you'll never see those. Nobody's ever gonna look at those. The inside's full of dirt and plants, the outside, or the back side is against the wall. So save paint, don't worry about those. 
And then once you let that sit for about 10 minutes, maybe not even 10 minutes, just kind of touch it, see if it's tacky, flip it right side up, and then paint that top lip that goes around the, um, the top of the window box. And then it's done, it's painted. Make sure everything is nice and evenly coated, let it sit till it's dry, and now it's time to start thinking about how you want to mount it to the wall. Traditional window boxes have a bracket that you attach to your wall, your exterior wall, and then they latch on to the window box. They're made for lighter boxes, and I have had tons of boxes even with the lighter boxes, I'm not impressed with that kind of bracket. It seems like over time and with the weather, they peel, they corrode, they bend. I just don't like them a lot. Another option is the corbel type that go underneath each side of the window box. They're really pretty and they look really nice. The only problem is I don't consider them a supportive structure for them. They're more decorative. Now, if you use a combination of the brackets and the corbels, I'm sure that they add some additional support, but I wouldn't trust them by themselves. For lifetime window boxes, I suggest you attach these suckers directly to the house. Forgo the brackets and the corbels. Now, these are not your traditional window boxes. These are beefy, hardcore, last a lifetime window boxes. They hold a lot of dirt, a lot of plants, and a lot of water, and that's a lot of weight. Now, use a measuring tape to see how wide your window is and find the center. For me, that was 19 and a half. Make a little mark in the center of the window with a pencil. Then, on the back of your window box, again, measure it to find the complete, the total length find the halfway mark and put a pencil mark on there. That way, when you're ready to attach the window box to the house, you just have to match up the two marks and you know it's correctly centered. I used this hex head screwdriver bit that actually came in the package with the six inch screws, goes right on there and gives you a really tight fit. You just drill that directly through the inside of the window box, through the board, and then through the other side of the window box that curves over directly into your siding and then on into the wood in the house. I used six of these. It's not coming up off. It is up there for a lifetime. That's it. Now fill your boxes with soil and plant away to your heart's content. These boxes add charm, character, and curb appeal to our otherwise plain Jane house. I can't wait to see all the flowers grown and full. I look forward to dressing these window boxes up seasonally. I hope you enjoyed today's DIY project. Be sure to join me again here next week right here on YouTube for another exciting DIY. Also, be sure to look below and click that link to the Sawdust and Cornbread blog. I post on there several times a week and there's all kinds of helpful home information for DIY projects, improvements, making things that you want from things that you already have. A lot of good information there, so be sure to check it out. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.